So we talked a bit about what goes into hosting a web application, and we're gonna start building up to that. So what I wanna start with right now is installing a web server that we can use to respond to incoming HTTP requests. And this will either serve a static file or pass it on to our application gateway or do any number of things, but those are the two things that we're gonna concentrate in the series. Now we could just do sudo apt-get install nginx, and that's great. That would get a certain version of nginx that may or may not be outdated. It's just gonna give us whatever version of nginx is available to Ubuntu 16.04 out of the box. So we can do app cache show nginx, and it should be able to see a version here. And there's probably a few available. So 1.9.15 is one version available, and 1.10.0 is another. So 1.10.0 is not the latest, although it is kind of close. What we can do is actually search for a PPA with Ubuntu. So if I Google PPA nginx stable, I know this one exists already, we get a Launchpad site, and Launchpad is a place for Ubuntu packages. Often you can get official repositories of the latest versions of software, and nginx stable is one place you can do that as well to get the latest stable branch of nginx. So we can see we get 1.10.3, which is a bit newer. It'll have some new bug fixes and features, and this shows you how to get it. So we can do app get repository ppa nginx stable, and then app get update to update our server so it knows there's new packages available from the repository we added. So we'll just go right ahead and add in that command. I'm gonna add a dash y flag here so it doesn't prompt me to ask if I really wanna do it or not. I know I do. So that'll add the repository. It even adds some keys here so it knows how to confirm with the server that this is a legitimate source of this package. Then we can do sudo app get update, and that'll update the local server's knowledge of the available packages, and we have more available packages here from the nginx repository we just added. And then we can go ahead and install nginx. So app get install dash y, so it won't prompt me to ask if I'm really sure. It'll install nginx, and then nginx should just be up and running when we're done. Okay, that's installed. So we can do curl localhost, and we do get nginx's default website. And we should be able to go to Safari here and add in the IP address of our server, and we'll see that there as well. Great. So the last thing we're gonna cover here is the nginx configuration setup. And we'll look at a few things there. So pretty much every configuration for any software you're going to install on a server is located in the Etsy directory. In this case, we have Etsy nginx and we see we have a bunch of files. Now the main configuration file to worry about here is the nginx.conf file. So let's head into that, and I'm just gonna show you a few different things. First here to notice is that it will include anything in the modules enable directory that ends in .conf. And then if we head to the bottom here, it's also gonna include two other locations, etsy nginx.conf.d, again, anything that ends in .conf, and then anything inside of etsy nginx sites enabled and it doesn't matter, it doesn't have to end in .conf, any file that's in there is gonna get included. So those configuration items are the default ones that you're going to get included with Nginx. So we can throw any file inside of conf.d that ends in .conf and that'll get loaded. And we can also throw anything inside of modules enabled that ends in .conf and that'll get loaded. I don't think there's really anything there out of the box. Oop, it has some. Okay, this is perfect. Now, they are symlinks, right? They're not the actual uh, configuration file. They're not an actual .conf file. They're a symlink and they go off somewhere else. So we have this modules available and modules enabled thing. And we'll see, modules available is empty. Now, if you wanted to install your own Nginx module, you can put it in the modules available directory and create a symlink inside of the modules enabled directory pointing to whatever is in modules available. And we have a similar setup here. It's just they don't point to something in modules available in the Etsy Nginx directory. Instead, they're in user share Nginx modules available, which is just a different location for Nginx default um, configuration files and libraries. But this convention is one that's used heavily in Debian and Ubuntu servers. We have available directories and enabled, and sites available or anything dash available is typically a real configuration file or library or something. And then sites enabled is where the program actually reads from. And in sites enabled, you'll typically create a symlink to the item in sites available. And that will allow us to turn off or on configurations as much as we want without actually deleting the configuration file. We just create or destroy a symlink. So if I go to sites enabled, We'll see we have a default file, and that's a symlink to the sites available default file. So if I back out a directory and go to sites available, we'll see we have the default file in there, and we can check it out. So now let's actually check out the default file here, and the sites available default file is the default server configuration that we typically will edit or change to host a website. 
So there's a bunch of comments here. I'm gonna get rid of a bunch of these lines and that's good enough for now. That'll be enough to clean us up here. All right, so a few things here. This is kind of similar to Apache's virtual host configuration. It's definitely synonymous with it. In other words, we set up a server configuration per website that we wanna host, sometimes even more than one per site. And what I wanna do here is just roll down the list and cover what it's doing. Okay, so we can set it to listen and what it's gonna do is tell it to listen on what network and port on our server. So if we just do listen and 80, it's gonna listen on port 80 for new HTTP requests, and it's gonna listen on all networks because we didn't define any specific network on our server here. So listen on port 80 for any incoming HTTP requests. Now this weird notation here is actually for IPv6, and this one's for IPv4. So IPv4 are your normal IP addresses like 192.168.16.10 or whatever. So by default, this will listen on IPv4 and IPv6 networks if your server has IPv6 enabled. Mine actually doesn't, so I don't even need this line. It won't hurt Nginx to have that line there if you don't use any IPv6 stuff on your server. Now we have this extra item here, default server, and this just says to Nginx that if it doesn't know where to send the web request, if it receives one in port 80 and has no idea where to send it, it doesn't match any of the server configurations, it's actually gonna end up at this server configuration because it says this is the default server. So you can only have one configuration that is set as the default server. But of course that's per port. So if you listen on some other port like 443 for SSL connections, you can set that as the default server for port 443 as well. Okay, root. Root is the document root. In other words, it's the location on the server is gonna look for files when it receives a web request asking for a file. So if it looks for index.html or index.css or styles.css or some JPEG image, it's gonna look within var html and it's gonna append any file path in there. So if I head over here and I look for some path to file.txt, it's gonna look on my server for var dubdub html directory sum, directory paths, directory two, and file.txt. Of course, that does not exist, so we get a 404. So var dubdub html sum path to file. Now index, index is if we do not define a file. So if I say here, I'm gonna grab a directory but don't define a file in there, I'll get 404 because that directory doesn't exist, but it actually in the background search for a file named index.html or index.htm or index.nginx-debian.html. Of course, it didn't find any of those, so we didn't get that served. Okay, server name. Server name is just a underscore here, which is a default in Nginx. It's really just saying there's no server name to match here. But this is typically where you put something like your website. So I can set this to something like serviceforhackers.com and it will look for requests sent to serviceforhackers.com that was received by this Nginx instance. So this is looking in the request header sent along for any HTTP request. So I'll cover that a little bit later, but we'll just set this to serviceforhackers.com for now. All right, location. Now in Nginx, there's a few syntaxes for this, but if you just do a path here, in this case, it's the root path, this is gonna match the root path and anything onto it. So this location block is actually getting run when I go to the root URL, in which case it finds our default website for Nginx, our default web page, or even if I do any path and any file, it'll also head to this location directive because the backslash is the root and then it grabs and applies and goes to this configuration for any subdirectory or file of that. Okay, so what is it doing though? So all it has is a try files directive and this is going to try to find a file on the server. In other words, this is what you'll see for a static website where there's nothing else like be PHP being used. So it's going to do a few things. It's going to try to match the URI given explicitly and the URI is just whatever's after the host name. So here's the URI and it's gonna find it explicitly, right? So it'll look for any path, any file.txt on the server. And if that doesn't exist, then it's gonna try it as a directory. So if it's gonna try it as a directory, it's essentially saying, is our directory named file.txt? And there isn't, there's no file or directory name there. So if there's no file there, or it's not a directory, then we're gonna respond with a 404 response. And that's what we see here. It says 404 are not found. All right, so that's good for hosting static sites. We have default pages. We're gonna tell it to try it as a file, then a directory, and then if anything can't be found, return a 404 error. Okay, let's save and quit this. The only thing I really changed was that server name directive. I'll do sudo service nginx config test, and it's gonna say this configuration is okay. In other words, I didn't break anything. You could also do sudo nginx t, it's the same command, but this will actually give you an error message with a line number of where it thinks the error is. So that's very useful for testing your configuration before reloading nginx. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and reload nginx. 
And this is a graceful reload. It doesn't restart it. It doesn't drop connections unless you have very high traffic, in which case it might. But it's going to reload the configuration. It's going to suck in that new configuration and then uh, continue on. Now, I didn't change anything. I did set that to expect the hostname service for hackers.com. Obviously, we're not using that. But it's still working, right? Because this is also the default site configuration, this default file. And because that's the default configuration, it's going to go to that configuration even though it's expecting servicebyhackers.com as the host name and it's not receiving that. All right, so let's actually uh, copy default and I'll just name a new one called my site. Let's do sudo vim my site. And I'm going to say instead of vardubdubhtml, go to my site. So search for a different place on my server for files. And instead of serviceforhackers.com, we're going to say expect to be uh, fidelper.com. And actually, you need a semicolon at the end of these lines. All right, so we changed two things. It's going to look for files at my site, and it's going to expect the hostname fidelper.com to be used. Now, I'm going to save and quit this. I'm going to do sudo nginx t to test it, and we'll get an error. Nope, we don't. You know why? Because sites available is where my site configuration exists, but it is not within the site's enabled directory, right? There's nothing there except the default configuration. So I'm going to head over to sites enabled, list that out. We're going to do sudo ln-s to make a soft symlink, a symlink of type soft instead of hard. And then we do the source and destination. So the source is the file that exists, sites available, my site. And the destination is Etsy Nginx sites enabled, in other words, the directory we're in right now. And I'll just call that my site as well. I'll list it out. Now we have two sites in there. Let's do sudo nginx t. And it's going to load both of those configuration files and say the test failed because it has a duplicate server default configuration. So let's edit the my site configuration. And we'll say that the second one for fidelper.com is not a default. So we can do sudo nginx t, it's okay. And now we can do sudo service nginx reload to actually suck in these configurations. So if I go here, what do you think is going to happen? I'm going to refresh. It's still going to go to the default site, which is the one that is expecting service for hackers.com, but is also the one that has the default site configured there. So if, if it doesn't know what to do, it's just going to go to the default. So let's show that a little bit here in a curl request. So if we just curl that IP address, I'll get rid of this part. We'll get the default site, as you might expect. I'll add a dash B flag so we can see some headers. So it's sending arrows pointing this way, right? And it's saying the user agent is curl. The host name is just the IP address. So this host header is getting sent to the server and it's just an IP address. Nginx doesn't know what to do with that. It's not a host name it expects. In other words, it's not serviceforhackers.com. It's not fidelper.com. So what it's gonna do is go to the default site, which is that default Nginx page. Now let's go over to var dub dub here. Let's go sudo uh, make dir my site. I'm going to sudo vim my site index HTML and just say this is fidelper.com because this is the directory we set fidelper.com to use and to expect files to be in for nginx to serve. So now we can do some stuff here. I'm going to add a header here to our HTTP request and it's going to be host servers for hackers.com. And this is going to give us that default Nginx page because that is the site configured to expect requests for serviceforhackers.com, right? So the host header is the important header here. That's what is used by the web server to match up the server configuration. So I sent it serviceforhackers.com. The configuration at Nginx sees that there's a configuration with a server name of serviceforhackers.com, so it uses that. So we could actually get the fidelper.com one here by changing the host header. So I'm going to send a request to the same server, right? Because it's just going to this IP address no matter what we do here. But I'm setting the host header to fid to be fidelver.com. And now I get the this is fidelver.com response. In other words, it's serving from the server configuration defined for fidelver.com because we have the host header here and it's matching that one. So hit Etsy Nginx sites available, uh, default. Default, once again, server name, serviceforhackers.com. So if it sees that in the HTTP host header, it's gonna grab that. If we go to my site, the server name is fidelper.com. So if Nginx sees the host header is set to fidelper.com, it's going to match this server configuration and head here, where it's going to serve files out of the my site directory. And that means the host header here is the important one for any web server to know, for both Nginx and Apache and all of them pretty much, to know how to route our request. In other words, to know which server configuration applies. And then, of course, we saw that in Nginx, we have a default um, server here configured on port 80. So anything that heads to port 80, like all of our requests just did, 
and Nginx doesn't see any host name that it recognizes, then this is gonna to go to this configuration because it's set as the default server. And that's it. I think that's a pretty good primer on Nginx configuration. We covered that the Nginx config main file is here. We covered that we can add anything ending in .conf in the conf.d directory. We saw that there's stuff in modules enabled and it's symlinked elsewhere, but you could also put stuff in modules available and symlink it into modules enabled to enable it. Same thing with sites available and enabled. The convention is to add real configuration files in sites available and then enable them by symlinking them in sites enabled. In other words, we create a symlink in sites enabled and it points to something in sites available. And then we saw we can do nginx-t or you can do even sudo service nginx config test and it tests your configuration. And if everything checks out there, you could do sudo service nginx reload to gracefully reload nginx and suck in new configuration. Finally, we saw how a site configuration is set up in Nginx. We saw that we could create a second configuration, and then we saw how the host header, the HTTP header named host, the value from that host header is what determines what server configuration is used by Nginx.